Diabetes is a chronic disease and requires attention throughout the life of the patient. Type 1 diabetes mainly affects children, adolescents and young adults. Insulin is a must for their survival. Type 2 diabetes develops at a later stage and nearly 10% of the patients are dependent on insulin. However, even after 100 years of discovery, insulin remains out of reach for half the people requiring it. Patients in low- and middle-income countries are worst affected. Um, we've had this as a drug for over 100 years, but still um, less than half of people who need insulin globally have access. And that, of course, is, is worse in low resource settings. Um, and this is for a, a range of reasons, but uh, cost is certainly in there. Um, with very um, few governments being able to provide insulin within the public sector in any kind of reliable way, um, but also the complexity of using insulin, um, both in terms of um, our healthcare workers' knowledge on the ground of how to prescribe it, how to monitor it, but also the investment that we've made as a global community to provide people li with living with diabetes, the tools, but also um, that the most important kind of education they need to be able to self-manage their disease. So it is complex, but we've had this drug for 100 years. So um, really, why aren't we doing better? We generally associate diabetes with obesity and lifestyle problems. But the context of low and middle income countries makes things worse. For example, lean diabetes, which occurs amongst the poor and malnourished people. We know that in rural India, or uh, rural India, uh, I'm talking about rural central India first, the marginalized uh, part of India, uh, almost 40% of all the adult diabetes, the, the typical type two diabetes, are a different form of diabetes than the one that we see in cities. And we would like to call that a diabetes of the poor, which also otherwise could be called as lean diabetes people who are undernourished and are diabetic. So as I would say that 70% of people in the areas that we work in in central India have diabetes, which is associated with normal or undernutrition situation, as opposed to in US where 95% of people who have diabetes are obese. So, and these type of, these diabetes that we see among the poor, not only pose a problem in their, in their diet control, but also the fact that 50% of them require insulin very early in their disease, uh, uh, disease progress. So therefore, the challenge to provide insulin for people who are uh, type 1 diabetes and those with type 2 or lean diabetes who require insulin are, are large. And one of the largest problems is, is what the fact uh, that these are injections that have to be given and they have to be given at least twice daily, if not three or four times daily, which poses a problem in terms of, you know, first teaching people and monitoring their diabetes. That is a challenge that, uh, that it throws up. Otherwise, you know, you cannot use a drug which can otherwise cause more problems than diabetes itself, which is that it can cause low sugar and then you can die because of that. So that poses the challenges to the system of, you know, having a trained people to teach how to use uh, insulin, how to monitor use of diabetes, uh, insulin. And the, the second problem is of the fact that it is a drug which is uh, thermolabile. So it is temperature sensitive. So ideally the temperature should be at less than eight degrees Celsius for insulin that is kept, but it can survive to some extent if it is below 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, that is a temperature which is not easily possible among the summer months in India. And I would say some at almost six months in a year, the day temperatures would often go beyond 25 in most places in, in India. So therefore, uh, one of the most important technologies that can help insulin survive and people who require insulin thrive is uh, refrigeration, which can, uh, which is not easy because it requires power. The usual public health systems are not, uh, they don't respect non-communicable diseases of which diabetes is one. And if at all they start 
paying it any attention they are focusing on type 2 diabetes the the type which does not require insulin and those children who require in all the type 1 diabetes who require insulin and the ones who are type 2 diabetes and require insulin are not under the radar of public health systems and they often die a premature death so it would not be uh, it would be the commonest many commonest uh, scenario that people with type 1 diabetes children would die by the age of 20 or 15 uh, because of intercurrent intercurrent infections and they may not be labeled as even in, as, as diabetes no one diagnoses no one treats them so these are the uh, the so called the hidden deaths that we see in our public health system uh, because of complete neglect of you know problems uh, which require some amount of challenges um, a technological advances like a refrigerator or a, or a drug like insulin so insulin is also not a cheap drug that is another problem i would say uh, insulin is a drug which uh, the cheapest uh, uh, insulin that i know cost for uh, about a, over 100 rupees for for for, for 400 units and uh, you require insulin syringes uh, which are not so cheap also again but 400 units cost uh, over 100 rupees that means uh, 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 cost of so you know you only get only four units of insulin per rupee of uh, you know per rupee and often chill people require uh, uh, i think the expenses that people make on only insulin for a one month treatment is over 1000 rupees per month inaccessibility to insulin is not limited to low and middle income countries The business practices of big pharmaceutical companies are making even the US citizens run for their lives literally. But uh, what the companies have done is they have filed for various uh, patents on the the devices the pens the injector pens. And that is what has actually blocked a lot of uh, biosimilar competition. So for example if we uh, look at what's happened in the united states which is what i'm more familiar with uh, because of the work that we've done here it's uh, the pen devices have been used in litigation and have actually delayed by a century i think only recently uh, myland broke through that barrier after various years of litigation uh, they 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 challenged some formulation patents which uh, lantus was holding and then they challenged the device patents and so you know one other thing that's worth noting is in the united states as a the regulatory system uh, the fda only approves a product once you clear the patent hurdle it's called the linkage of patents and uh, regulatory approval and uh, what uh, what companies were doing the, the 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 three main companies were actually listing on the orange book which is a, a book that lists the patents related to the product that the FDA has approved the originator product they were listing device patents in order to stall biosimilar entry and this was a gray area uh, there wasn't any real uh, uh, sort of practice of of guidelines as to whether these patents should be listed or not so they found a loophole a bit of uh, the ambiguity and they they played on it and so that has actually been one of the reasons why we haven't seen uh, a biosimilar entry it's been caught up in litigation even companies that have litigated a settled merck actually was going to come up with its own biosimilar product it was sued by lantus and eventually they settled and they didn't come to market so we still technically have three companies that are actually a sort of an oligopoly in the united states and actually globally even now you think about uh, that uh, these three companies novo nordisk and uh, um, sanofi and uh, Eli Lilly represents sort of 90% of the global market uh, and if you think that only um uh, i think the figure is is that US companies only 50% of the global insulin market but yet they uh, they account for 50% of the revenue so the US is really uh, in a dire situation when you compare it to other OECD countries and elsewhere uh, because uh, you know we've heard stories where people are crossing borders in the united states to get insulin they're rationing their insulin and people have died as a result so this is this is the situation so i think it's actually a mixture of patents it's a mixture of uh, uh, very poor antitrust laws anti competition laws to kind of break these this kind of cartel and and the ability for these companies because they have so much power to to shadow price you know usually you think in a healthy competitive market 
you have three players, they'll bring the prices down of each of them. In fact, they've gone lockstep up, 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 up in terms of shadow pricing. Um, you know, and, and, and that is actually what's played out. And, and there's, a big, there's a big inquiry going on here in the United States as to why this is happening, but yet we have not seen any real solution. If we take uh, uh, the US public spending programs, which we call Medicare, so this is, this is for whether the, the US government actually spends uh, for people who are entitled because of, you know, they're, they're either elderly or they're, they don't have the means to receive their medication. When we think about how much that's being spent, like for example, I mean, these are some of the figures that I've got here, like Lantus, uh, which is Sanofi's product, this uh, Medicare alone spends 27, spent 27 billion on, on the product. Uh, Novolog, which is Novo Nordisk, some 17 billion was spent on that. Um, Humalog, which is Eli Lilly, that's a 12 billion. So we you know we're talking a significant uh, dollars. And, um, and, and, and so, you know, the companies are saying, well, we're, you know, the list prices are not what the payers are paying. There's a there's discounts and so forth, but that really still is not making a big enough dent in the profit margins and the amounts that people are having to pay or public payers are having to pay. In terms of anecdotes, I mean, the the, the stories that patients we've spoken to, and I I, I alluded to those in my my last uh, uh, longer slightly longer answer was the, the people are traveling to Mexico to get there. Uh, to the, the incident. Uh, stories we've spoken to, there's a, there's, a, there's a story here which which where I think it was a, a mother's son uh, was literally couldn't afford to buy his insulin, so he was rationing it. And as a result of rationing, he died. Um, and this is a common story that, that you know, if you, you just spend time on people we've been in touch with in the US, uh, the stories you hear of, of, of people, the price tags that are put on, like some two thousand, three thousand uh, dollars, uh, to get their insulin for a month, and uh, it's quite shocking that we, you know, in the richest country in the world, you have people who are rationing their uh, sort of life-saving medication. That they, it's just not like it's not. This is not a choice. This is something that they have to take, and um, and and the fact that that people have to say, well, I can't afford it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use whatever vial I have. And use it into not in its not the way I should be using it into injecting into myself in its in its full form. I'm going to save a little bit so that I've got enough because I can't afford to buy the next one. Um, I think uh, I think it just shows the, the the severe drug pricing problem that the United States is facing, um, and and as a result of the the intellectual property laws, the patent system. You know, many people talk about well, how is it that three companies are controlling the market and patents really aren't an issue. I think they are an issue. They, they still form part of an issue, at least in the United States. And, um, and that's because the system allows it uh, in, the, in the name of innovation. And uh, I think uh, the, the one thing I've learned as, as and I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a US, uh, from the US, I'm from England. I grew up in a national healthcare system, what have you. But I think the United States has what, I don't call it a healthcare system, I call it an economic system. All the incentives are pointed to driving economics. And I think until the United States can realize that, uh, and other countries realize it, that this is not a good model, that uh, we, we, we're gonna continue to have this problem because of the large influence that these companies have, and they pressure uh, the United States government and Western country governments that these are the models that they think are best for, the, uh, for, for patients, but only enhance the private market and private power. The issue of lack of access to insulin has become so serious that governments realized they had to intervene in some manner. Thus, in this year's World Health Assembly, they passed a resolution on insulin to address some of these issues. But we will need to wait and see if they are committed to change the ground reality. Um, this year at the World Health, Health Assembly, um, member states, governments endorsed a resolution on diabetes, and we really welcome several key points in that resolution, one of which was around developing a web-based tool so that we get some transparency around these insulin prices and for member states to be able to kind of benchmark the prices um, when doing tender. So this, we feel, is a really positive step forward, but it needs to be um, implemented. It needs to be utilised by the member states that have endorsed this resolution. 
A second really important point um, in the resolution was linked to um, the ability for companies, generic companies that make NCLIM, um, to enter the market. Currently, they face really complex um, regulatory processes to get their products approved. And so we hope um, that the, through the resolution that um, WHO can really start to work with um, some of the generic producers of insulin to help bring their products to market and increase competition. And by doing this, we hope um, that this will drive prices down. The other really important point we see, and we see this in our projects, um, we see people not only rationing insulin, but we see people rationing the tools they need to inject insulin and the tools they need to monitor insulin. Um, so that's needles and syringes, that's glucose strips to, to monitor the, the blood, sugar, blood sugars. Throughout the resolution, it talks about not just the drug, but it talks about diagnostics, and it talks about health technologies to monitor. So it's really important that we work as a global community to make sure that a bundle of tools that is needed to use insulin is budgeted for, forecast for, um, and procured. Because insulin alone really is not enough. We need to make sure um, people living with diabetes have the tools to inject insulin and monitor um, its use so that it's used safely. Thank you.